Hi everyone, number one Marmaduke fan here, and we're looking at the first trade paperback of Tanahisi Coates' Black Panther, with art by Brian Stelfrazy. Uh, man, it seems like so long ago, and yet only yesterday. 2016, it was Black Panther was selling well, mostly because of Brian Stelfrazy's art. I knew of Tanahisi Coates from political writing before he came on Black Panther, so I had zero hope for this series. I didn't think that someone with uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates' worldview could write a meaningful story. And every so often, Diversity in Comics would read it and kind of praise Ta-Nehisi Coates' talent, but then kind of criticize aspects of Coates' writing. And I'm kind of glad that I waited to get read this in trade paperback form. I think I'd have been disappointed if I paid $4.99 for every issue of this. And it is, not only is it pays for the trade, this trade ends on a cliffhanger for next time. Uh, having read Ta-Nehisi Coates, uh, I have a respect for him. I think that he is able to write in such a way that he facilitates his worldview into a story and doesn't just lecture me with his worldview. And it's almost kind of a tragedy because I think because of Ta-Nehisi Coates' worldview, uh, I think it's difficult for him to tap into kind of the, mis the magic of a character like the Black Panther, who is a king. Uh, now, when the movie came out, there was this weird political aspect to it where I think uh, elements of the racial identity politics left saw it as Afrofuturism, as a vision of Africa without the white man. And fortunately, this actually this book actually includes like the first appearance of the Black Panther. And what's clear about the original Black Panther is he was just supposed to be a cool guy in a suit who's a king who likes to go on hunts and he has super technology because that was Marvel Comics. It was a big, fantastical world with lots of crazy stuff. Everybody had a super amazing society and it was just, I want to fight this Fantastic Four guy to prove I'm strong. And then the mystery is, well, why did he attack us? And then he'll tell us his tale in the next issue. Uh, it's a simple character, simple idea, fun, kid-friendly thing. I don't think that Thomas C. C. Coates is writing a character that a little boy could read and look up to and say, I want to be the Black Panther. I think that Ta-Nehisi Coates is trying to write a uh, political drama and political intrigue. And so I, uh, I guess I'm paying him the compliment that I think highly enough of him that I think of William Shakespeare and Julius Caesar, but unfortunately he does not measure up to uh, William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. I think he's trying to touch on these themes in his comic book world. It's not that a comic book can't touch on adult themes and mature ideas that challenge adults, but if you're gonna if you're gonna go for it, Tanahisi, then then you gotta you gotta learn from what's come come before. So let's look at Black Pants the first, and then I'll make my William Shakespeare parallel. Ooh, beautiful art. So most the reason I would mostly recommend you pick this up is this right here. Brian Brian still crazy. This is just brilliant stuff. Even if you look at his breakdowns, he'll have like a good breakdown, and then he'll ridiculously improve it in the inking stage. So. Uh, Ma magnificent art you know I just like flipping through it and looking at the the beautiful pictures and the really clean line work absolute professionalism so what's interesting about this is they kind of catch us up to speed and this actually has some inaccuracies in it it says Shuri's dead when Shuri's frozen in time and they're probably going to bring her back right so get that get that description right so I can if I'm confused a little boy who's into the Black Panthers definitely going to be confused so Black Panther's kingdom is falling apart. They've been wracked by a biblical flood. Uh, Dr. Doom attacked them. Thanos attacked them. And the people are revolting. And they're blaming this on a shaman who they believe is mind-controlling the people. But what it turns out is... Oh, spoiler, 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 by the way, for a 2016 comic. She doesn't really mind-control people. She just brings out the emotions they feel. So Black Panther is having to deal with problems of his kingdom falling apart and of the people of Wakanda wanting their own kind of like Wakandan revolution. No one man should rule Wakanda. So he's lost his mystique. He's lost the love of his people. He's lost the fear and respect of his people. And my problem with this is I have no one to root for. I guess he's trying to be a good king and take care of his people and protect his nation. But 
and all the people, well, they're, you know, super good and they want a democracy and who, who's the good guy and who's the bad guy? Now, uh, okay, let's, let's make a Shakespeare parallel. So, uh, William Shakespeare's Julius Caesar is also about political intrigue. It's also about themes of tyranny and democracy and the people uh, versus the elites, right? So what Shakespeare does is uh, he gives us a set of characters. We focus on those characters and we get inside their heads. So Julius Caesar, everyone should read Shakespeare. It is a pity if a high school student hasn't read at least some Shakespeare by the time they graduate. It is an absolute travesty that English majors are graduating without having read I'd prefer if they read the entire works of Shakespeare to get to get any kind of English degree, but it's a, it's a tragedy. I haven't read the entire works of Shakespeare yet, but he, he is the reason so many of his lines are famous is that he condensed so much thought into just like they, they feel like long plays, but so much thought is condensed in them that they're electric. Like you haven't thought an interesting hot take about politics or you know sadness of life that Shakespeare probably hasn't like captured in beautiful language in one of his plays. So Shakespeare is like his great piece musing on the nature of politics itself, using uh, Julius Caesar and uh, Brutus as his characters. And you'll see like so many parallels today. Like it opens with Flavius and Marullus uh, taking ornamentations off of statues of Caesar because they're afraid of the people are idolizing Caesar too much, right? So that's sort of like shadow banning. Uh, what do you, why do you shadow ban people to kind of like arbitrarily limit their, their apparent popularity of ideas you don't like? And Flavius and Marlus are either killed or exiled from Rome. They're actually, they're actually not that important a character, but just even like the minor characters, you start instantly seeing connections to today. And, you know, the famous scene, Caesar is warned to beware the Ides of March, and he's kind of deeply troubled, and he's supposed to have like, uh, he's worried about traitors, and Caesar likes fat men, and he doesn't like men with a mean and hungry look, like Cassius. So, man, like, like, so much of your the collective imagination has been a focus, uh, has been honed by Shakespeare. Like fat men are kind of like stereotypically, you know, s stupid and in a stupor, and uh, they're not active. And Cassius, the hungry man, he he he's hungry for he's hungry to get Caesar. He hates Caesar. Uh, why why should Caesar be cel celebrated and Cassius not celebrated? So the beauty of this is Cassius and Brutus are sympathetic characters. Uh, Brutus is named for someone who killed uh, Tarkin, and Grand Moff Tarkin from Star Wars is named after that historical figure. So Brut the first Brutus in history killed Tarkin and freed the Roman people. So now this Brutus, well, he feels like he has to live up to his name and prevent the Roman people, who he thinks are, have become womanly, from submitting to a king, em Emperor Caesar. And he loves Caesar. He loves Julius Caesar. But Cassius, because he's envious and hates Caesar manipulates Brutus by using Brutus's own sense of nobility and his love of liberty into killing Caesar uh, because they believe they will rescue Rome through this act of treachery. But, but um, tsh, Caesar, even though he's a tyrant, he has the people behind them. It's Trump, it's Trumpian. Uh, when uh, New York play, put on plays with Trump as Caesar, I think they did that because they kind of got a kick out of seeing an actor dressed as Donald Trump get murdered. But actually, if you paid attention to Caesar, it was it's like Trump would make more sense. Why would people elect someone like Donald Trump? Well, the same reason people would elect someone like Caesar, because they perceived him as being for the people, and they were sick and tired of the elite uh, Republican senators. So it's great. Every Everything you've ever thought about an interesting political drama is contained in Julius Caesar, uh, and he has sympathetic, uh, villainous characters who have good reason and good philosophy behind what they do, and yet they murder Caesar, and they foolishly overlook Mark Anthony. They think, well, if we cut off the head, then Mark Anthony, Caesar's servant, he won't pose any threat to us, and Mark Anthony delivers one of the greatest speeches ever, paying homage to Caesar. It's it's just great writing, and it's great writing because even though there, there's sympathy for the villains, the reason you know that Sh Shakespeare is making an overarching point is that 
the tragedy is Brutus thought by killing Caesar he would save Rome, and all he does is he ushers in the very empire that he fears and betrays kind of his own his own virtue as a Roman by betraying by betraying the man he loved and the man who uh, was a benefactor of him. Ah, so uh, Tanikisi quotes comes Tanikisi quotes flirts with these ideas, but he doesn't have the capacity to kind of bring it home and speak speak to speak on a meaningful level and, and to universal truths. So it ends up being kind of like a long, you know, slew of, you know, uh, T'Challa, T'Challa musing about the nature of kingship and the mystique of kings. And then, you know, the poor lesbians, uh, royal guard, they killed an evil man, and so now she must be put to death. So they decide to break her out, and they're going to start their revolution against T'Challa because they're sick of having kings and T'Challa keeps getting humbled and having to think about you know the role of kingship and, uh, pretty art lesbians pretty art what, what is I think Andrew Cla it's Andrew Clavin who says we're awash in left-wing cliches so you know, every bad guy is like an evil rapist man every good girl is like a, a super strong ba battle warrior woman uh, the the king well he's afraid to kill people and He's kind of like a generic good king, and the people, they kind of have a generic good revolution for democracy. I want to highlight this. So this is where I start to feel a lot of sympathy for Ta-Nehisi Coates, and I started respecting him. The injury and the crime were equal, whether committed by the wearer of a crown or some petty villain. Great robbers punish the little ones to keep them in their obedience, but, but, but the great ones are rewarded with laurels and triumphs because they are too... Uh, too big for the weak hands of justice in this world. They have the power in their possession, which should punish offenders. Which is my which is my remedy against the robber who so broke into my house? And then he tells them to think about Locke for tomorrow. So they are learning about John Locke in Wakanda. They are fascinated with Western philosophy. Uh, I this is from Locke's treatise of government. I haven't read. Locke's treatises on government. I've read like summaries of Locke in other like you know contemporary books that try to like explain him for a modern audience. But when you Google this, uh, this book actually comes up before John Locke's treatise of government. So what Ta-Nehisi Coates has done is he has introduced a big idea from John Locke to a generation, and I think it's good for people to read John Locke. Uh, what what? Why is he using John Locke? Does does Ta-Nehisi Coates genuinely respect John Locke? Does he believe that uh, young people should read John Locke and apply apply John Locke, or is he introducing John Locke as part of a broader category of like some social justice message? So the application the teacher makes from this is how should the weak marshal justice against the powerful? So John Locke is a philosopher who is a foundation of the American ideal. Uh, of Amer American political philosophy drew heavily from John Locke, that he influenced the founders, Their, the idea of separation of powers. They were pulling ideas from John Locke. When Ta-Nehisi Coates makes use of John Locke, which I respect, he is using it to make a weak versus powerful dichotomy. So I think that's the social justice kind of quasi-Marxist way of looking at power as the weak and the have-nots versus the haves, the powerful versus the powerless, power dynamics, power dynamics, power dynamics, and then projecting that backwards onto Western history. So they'll say the American revolutionaries were like Marxist revolutionaries. And what that misses is that something about the American Revolution was fundamentally different than the French Revolution. Marx, Marx was carrying the ideas of the French Revolution into his economic myopic net economic theory. And I think we've been cursed by Marx for about 200 years. Since. Oh, look, pretty art. Yay, pretty art. I don't, I, got, I don't have to think about that stuff anymore. Yay, pretty art. <laughs> and then uh, well, pretty much T'Challa is sort of shamed, shamed and tricked into revealing his weakness to his people. And he re it's all falling apart before him. And, oh, look, sure, he's alive because no one really dies in comic books. And you should have explained that before so I wasn't confused for the whole first part of the book. Uh, he and his mother come and confront the teacher. And it turns out that the teacher kind of is a – he disrespects the monarchy. And uh, he's a bit, of, he's a bit sub subversive, but they still – I don't know, they, 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 they will exile people for speaking against the monarchy, but they want the benefits of uh, Western philosophy. So they're having a hard time, like, keeping their culture together. There are, there's a cultural division within Wakanda. And uh, T'Challa's 
adopted mother and this guy have a debate over uh, whether nationalism is a lie, whether it's just a myth. And I think this is where Ta-Nehisi Coates is taking his critique of America, his, uh, his kind of torturous thinking about America. And he's trying to put this into the magical Af so you you look at this and think oh it's the magical afro city no this is a metaphor for american society with a king that's kind of reminiscent of english society uh so says the mother my teachers were imaginative and visionary but they dug no wells built no walls fed no children the best of them were only men of theory so she believes that you have to be more than a man of theory you need something practical but we were Wakanda. We were the golden city. We were supposed to be exceptional. We still are Wakanda and will always be exceptional. You did not condemn us for being mediocre. You condemned us for not being divine. So this is, uh, this is a great panel because these are like good old you know Marvel comics with you know, Charles Xavier is Martin Luther King and Magneto is Malcolm X. The, these are two sides of a coin. So. The mother is speaking to exceptionalism, as in American exceptionalism, and the value of a nation and civilization and a history. And he is critiquing the idea that nations are imperfect. They have imperfect histories. They do bad things. So who is right? And fortunately, uh, Coates gives us nothing. You know, it kind of like raises these questions, floats them, do doesn't do much with them. So would I give this to a kid? I don't think a kid would have fun with this. Uh, I think these are interesting ideas, but I think Coates has the problem of s stretching them out too far and of uh, what what else? It's not fun comics. Uh, and, oh yeah, he also has the problem of like fake Bible talk or fake Shakespeare talk where they won't say... Uh, they won't speak normally. They'll say, like, you taught me the uh, once I regretted that I was young in a strange land and made by you to feel, to fully feel like a woman, right? He's trying to capture the air of old, you know, intelligent speak and let him, let him talk normal. Uh, maybe at most let him have a few, like, you know, funny Wakanda-isms and, you know, have them express intelligent ideas, don't, like, arbitrarily layer it in old archaic English to make them sound more intelligent. So the shaman who's working with the shaman girl, he got super duper shaman powers and he got ticked at people who exploit other people. So he's kind of like a quasi French revolutionary Mar Marxist figure. He's angry at people taking advantage of the little guy and he wants them all to rise up. And T'Challa has like a back and forth with his adopted mom and she, it, there's like great stuff buried in all the verbiage. So she tells him, you know, you've you've uh you've felt a lot of the weight of the crown. You've lost so much, but you actually haven't given anything. You've had people taken from you unwillingly. You've never actually given anything willingly for your people. And because of that, you f think of your people as a burden you bear, a weight on your shoulders. And so you haven't actually had had a chance to develop love for your nation. Uh you have never truly given yourself to your country. So this is the weird thing about Black Panther, period, is that uh, the movie, even the movie captures like these ideas of a nation state, of love of one's country, of love of one's history, of love of one's king. These are Western ideas with a magical a African kingdom being the field to tell what's a very Western story. The racial identity politics left just sees Afrocentrism, uh, they see representation, and they miss that, you know, it's like the meme. But the reason people put a MAGA hat on Black Panther when the movie came out is they're a nation protected by walls. They're a nation with ancient traditions. They're a nation that does not look well on outsiders coming into their nation. These are very powerful ideas that can be the basis for some great stories. You can, you know, critique nationalism in a story, but you can't just dismiss nationalism as evil. And so I kind of give Coates props for not just dismissing nationalism as evil, but I wonder how much his social justice progressivism kind of prevents him from tapping into that and making, actually making Black Panther a good and admirable heroic character. Instead, he just becomes like one force versus the other guys who they're good too, everybody's good, everybody hates everybody, you know, who, what is good and what is evil. And then they ex experience terrorism that's kind of like 9-11-ish for them, and then he says, this is war, and we don't get resolution for that. So uh, pr props to Coates for, I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed it, but 
I'm just like, it's like I'm wrestling with him. I like when I wrestle with a writer. I like when a writer doesn't just lecture me and Coates has successfully done that. I would recommend that you read the trade paperback of this. Uh, I wish it was more fun. I wish that uh, you should either make it so that little kids can like look at it and say, oh, wow, crazy, crazy things everywhere and bright colors and they're fighting and they're, they're trapped and they're sad and they, look at all those crazy machines and he's going to hunt them. He's going to beat them up, but they got to team up. And oh man, he looked over the one little thing and that's such a cool twist the root, right? This is a completely different type of thing. Uh, I don't think this will appeal to children. Uh, does it appeal to me as an adult? It's, it's interesting. Uh, I, I, I have more respect for Coates, but... You're still paling in comparison to, to this. And I don't know. You don't need to be William Shakespeare, but give me give me something that I can take away. Get reinforce some kind of true principle. Uh, if you have like moral gray area, give give me something to take away from it still, beyond just, wow, everything sucks. So I think that's the point. So mostly Brian Stelfrazy, yeah, pick it up. Oh, we got, how can we not look at Brian Stelfrazy's art? I mean, come on. Uh, since that was my absolute favorite thing, let's just take a peek at this beautiful process and development art. Man, oh man, here we go. Yeah, like beautiful handling of ink work. He, he, he talks about, you know, the grace of the character Black Panther and his appreciation of that and the need to capture that in the costume. He talks about how the background should have this idea of the old world mixed with a futuristic technology to reinforce the political metaphor. I mean, he, t he talks about how, oh, yeah, uh, uh, Ta-Nehisi taught me so much. I think that 100% Brian Stelfrazy is the deserves top billing for this project, for his contribution to it. Uh, I yeah, Coates d did write something meaningful. He did write something well without propagandizing something. He didn't. He did not propagandize an SGW worldview. But I still think, as a matter of comic writing, comic writing should be a matter of short story. It's short story writing, not Game of Thrones uh, novel writing. This was it. This is what I was thinking of. Look at this blue, you know, NP blue, little sketch, and then bam! Like he, he has his shadows, and then he like makes this crazy tattoo stuff everywhere and that's nuts wow mad respect i love it and like little notes in the technology and what it can be used for and still phrase his thoughts on how this kind of is a symbol of the people i love it all right and then let's look at some artists ryan sook yeah I, I like that bright red to kind of like give, give him some pop uh todd nook and rochelle rosenberg okay yeah yeah, yeah, I, I like it. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to get my head around it. And then kind of like a more of an old school Panther versus the Fantastic Four by Felipe Smith, Black Panther 50th anniversary. Larry Stroman, Mark Morales, and Jason Keith. Uh, T'Challa, Black Panther, one of these hip hop variants by Brian Stelfrazy with just like a real like realistic. It's not even showing up on my phone, but like really realistic charcoal drawing. I hate the Funko variants, but uh, Scotty Young. I always like Scotty Young co covers when I see them. Uh, John Tyler Christopher, just kind of like emphasizing like the tribal tattoo aspect of it. Neil Adams, the greatest Batman artist ever. I don't know about this one. Uh, kind of roaring intensely with like a weird flag. Uh, Del, Del Keown. Yeah, I don't know a lot of these people. Mike McCone and Frank Martin with cool panther and a cool background. Whole like four, so many variant covers, Marvel. Sanford Green, like birth and then growing up and then the revolution it's kind of cool frank cho i've never seen frank cho do this style before if it's like a painting yeah and like no girls with butts okay good for you frank cho to to i wish you had like dumped on comic skate people but i still i still respect your art uh jamal campbell what is that age of apocalypse i don't like the paint job on this it's distracting from the line art too much and then it's really weird kind of like what would this be like romantic painting influenced one where he's like got, got a lot of torsion in his body and he's lifting them up and there's like flex, flex of paint everywhere. I kind of like that for its uniqueness, Kyle Baker. And then they give you a chronology for the little boys who got bored and did not get this far. If, if, if this had a little bit more action adventure, the little boys would have gotten this far and then they get a whole chronology of Black Panther comics they should read. But 
But then the little boy can flip to the back of this and enjoy like a crate. Yay! Action! Jack Kirby machines! And he's gonna go hunt them! It's so cool! Monsters! Fire! He's trapped! And they gotta get out of the trap! And the college roommate is there too! What's the college roommate? Goes, oh, there's water that makes the thing weak! And he's so funny and he talks in like that New York voice. And the, the Black Panther's so cool and mysterious and fights all four of them. Yeah. A little bit more of that, Ta-Nehisi Coates. If you, can't, if you can't do that, give me a little more of the fun stuff. With that, I'm number one Marmaduke fan. I love you guys. I have a subscribe star. If you don't have a subscribe star, please use my referral link to sign up for subscribe star and they will support this channel. If you support this channel on subscribe star, you will be thanked in the credits of every single video. If you enjoyed my reviews, why don't you like, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to receive notifications. I love you guys and I will catch you later.